Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Community Extension Mod by Thundar Modding. And more specifically, the Unit Convert Add-on, Unit Convert Add Units Add-on, and the Display Add-on Mods. In many ways, this is the successor to the Unit Convert Light Mod. However, once I started using it, I realized it does so much more and immediately switched all of my saves over to using Community Extension. In order to get all of the functionality I'll be showing in this video, you will need to download all four of the mods. I will be including links to the mods as well as a link to Thundar's Discord server in the description below. Don't worry, all of these mods are extremely small and setting them up is much easier than it first appeared to me. I also want to mention that Thundar has been working on additional add-ons for Community Extension that aren't yet available in the latest version of the mod that we're looking at today. So it's important to think of Community Extension as more than just its unit convert components. So what does the Community Extension mod do? The biggest feature that this mod brings is its ability to convert all of the units in the game. As a US player, seeing everything in leaders across the game felt unnatural. The Unit Convert mod gives me the ability to display the product in my trailer in a more appropriate unit. For example, here in our trailer, we have 137.8 bushels of soybeans. Similarly, it's going to allow me to display the capacity and current amount of product that we have in our bins in that fill level as well. So here we can see I have 20,000 bushels of soybeans available in my farm silo. If I open up the commodity prices menu, you're also able to see that the units have been changed here as well. And so you can see that same 20,000 bushels of soybeans in the silos. And it's changed the prices here to reflect that I'm selling these soybeans at a per bushel amount, which again makes it all so much easier in your head when you're looking at these different units to understand what's going on in the game. And when you sell your crops, what you should expect to receive for those. And one of the coolest additions with the community extension unit convert mod is that it also changes the fill level units in the store here as well. So you can see here, I'm taking a look at a harvester and I can see that this harvester holds 159 bushels. This is going to apply to all vehicle and implement types that have a fill type unit displayed on the screen here. And in some cases, you may run across something where you want to view that in a different unit. You're going to be able to click the uh, unit convert button here or use the keyboard command to toggle through the different types of units. This is a really cool addition to the mod that wasn't present in Unit Convert Lite. And I've also talked to Thundar about the possibility in the future of making it so that instead of displaying meters here for implement width, we're able to display that in feet or some other unit of measure. The unit conversion isn't just for the fill levels though. If we hop into this uh, sprayer that I have out here in the field, you'll see in the lower right hand corner, I have my cruise control set to eight miles an hour. And so I'm gonna accelerate here to eight miles an hour. And you can see here on the console in my sprayer that we are now displaying the miles per hour in my vehicle that matches the unit conversion that the game, the base game already does. Um, the base game already lets me set miles per hour on the speedometer in the lower right hand corner, but unit convert is allowing me to display that miles per hour in the actual vehicle so let's take a look at the community extension menu and talk about some of the other options that are available with this set of mods. In the settings menu, we've got some basic settings here. A lot of the stuff in community extension is pretty self-explanatory. If you mouse over it, you'll see a message below here, which is going to explain what that option does. Thundar has done an awesome job of providing a lot of useful information throughout the user interface here. And so community extension is relatively intuitive to use. If we expand the in-game menu section here, you can see that we have an option to show fill type names. Popping back into our community prices menu, that's what's allowing the name to show up below each of the crop types. I find this extremely useful, especially with maps that have additional fruit types. It can get to be a little bit confusing trying to keep track of what each of those icons mean. And so having clearly written out words below the fruit types is extremely helpful for me. If we expand the in-game HUD section, there's a few different options here. The big ones are being able to show a fill percentage, which you can see down here in the lower right hand corner. In addition to showing my 709.1 gallons, 
I'm also able to see that I have 56% of my tank full. Similarly, I'm able to adjust the precision of various things that are displayed in the game. And so if I wanted more or less precision on that fill level, I could adjust that here up or down to show how many decibel places I wanted to display. Moving on to the unit convert tab, we have two different categories here. The first category is units. These are all of the units that are added by default by that unit convert add units companion that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. That mod's purpose is essentially to add the different units to the game that you want. By default, we've got the US and metric units that most players are gonna wanna use included here in the game knowing that there are a lot of different units of measure around the world and they're used in different ways the ability to completely customize that is very welcomed for the average us player however everything's going to be here available for your use you can see here that you're able to customize a number of different things for each individual unit in this case for bushels I'm able to say that I want to display a precision of two decimal places you can also change the name that is displayed in different UI elements you're also able to establish the abbreviation that gets displayed in certain parts of the UI as well. Adding additional units is going to be outside of the scope of this tutorial. However, there is really good documentation included within the add units companion mod. So if you open that up and look at the XML files, or go to Thundar's Discord server, which will be linked in the description of this video, you'll be able to find a guide to adding additional units to the game. Now, if we expand the fill type groups, this is probably the most important section of the community extension unit convert setup process here. When you come into this screen for the first time by default, everything is going to be displayed in the base game setup, which would be liters across the board. And I believe kilograms per meter cube would be the default. For me as a US player for grain types, I want to see all of those displayed in bushels and I'm using pounds per cubic foot as my density unit. There are a few different options here. You could display that as pounds per bushel, pounds per gallon, tons per bushel, tons per gallon, etc. And so you're able to pick the setting that makes the most sense for you. And essentially you're gonna need to come in here and make those changes for each of the fill type groups, setting up the default units here available to you. So in my case, for grains, we've used bushels. For solids, I've used tons. For liquids, we're using gallons. Peace, it makes sense to leave those as peace. Animals, I'm leaving those as animals. And then for the other units, I've left them in liters for the time being, such that if I see something being displayed in liter, I know that it's falling into the other category and I can come in here and adjust it as necessary. Now, the next natural question is, well, what goes into the grain versus the solid fill type group? And for that, we have the third tab here, which is our fill type manager. And so I'll use wheat as an example here to start off with. If I expand wheat and go to the general setting here, I can see that wheat is set up as a grain. I'm able to change the display density here, which in this case is pounds per cubic foot. This would only change it from a display purposes uh, it wouldn't actually change how it works inside of the game. For me personally, I don't wanna mess with any of these, but for a more advanced player who wants to have that ultra realism in the game, these are things that you can tweak so that as you're playing the game, things look accurate for you. The next setting is this units tab underneath the wheat fill type. And here you can see that we're able to adjust what unit we use for the price, vehicle, feed, and density. In our case, and in most cases, you're going to accept the default option. The default option means that it will use the unit defined for its fill type group, which in our case is grain. Remember that the units for fill type groups are defined back here on the unit convert tab. Where this screen really comes in handy is when you add additional units to the game. And so in this case, I have anhydrous being added to this map. And so I can come in here and say that anhydrous needs to belong to the liquid group. By default, most new units in the game that the unit convert mod doesn't know anything about will likely start in this other fill type group, which means it'll get displayed with some odd units. And so our ability to come in here and define this as part of the liquid group means that it'll pick up all of those settings that we've already defined here and start using gallons in our case as its display unit. If for some reason you do want to override the unit that is displayed for the group that this fill type belongs to, you can come into the units tab here 
and change this to be whatever unit you want it to be. And for this particular fill type or crop or whatever it is, you're able to change those display units for the specific area that you want and override those. One feature I haven't talked about yet is you'll notice that as I change this, the label is turning red here, which means this is something that has been changed and is different from my currently saved values. What this means is that this item is different from the currently saved default values on either my map level or the global level. And so I have the ability to make these changes and if I hit escape, those changes are still going to persist for this particular saved game. However, if I wanted to reuse these values on different saved games, I have the option to either save these as map default values so that whenever I play on this particular map, these are the settings that are going to get used, or I can save these as my global values. The global values are what is going to be used by default whenever I start any new game. And then after that, it checks to see if there are map specific values that it should load in before using the save game specific values. If I've made a bunch of changes and don't like them, or I've been playing on another saved game and set them up how I want, you're able to come in and load either the map default values or the global default values. I'm also able to hit the reset button here and reset my settings to their last saved values so that you can play around, try some things out, and then instantly go back to the settings that you were on before. As if all of that was not enough, we still have a few additional features to cover. First off, if we jump into the keyboard commands here and scroll down to where we have the community extension keyboard settings, you're gonna find a, the option to set what controls you use to open the menu that we were just looking at and we also have the ability to toggle between different fill types if we're for example in a planter that has both seeds and fertilizer we have a concept of worked area which we'll cover here in a minute and we also have the ability to select what unit is being displayed while we're sitting in the vehicle if we want to toggle through those for some reason without going in and changing the settings in the menu. And so for example here, we're in our sprayer and it's displayed as gallons for liquid fertilizer. If I push right shift U, I'm able to toggle this through various units, which can be very handy depending on what you're trying to do. So speaking of the worked area portion of the mod, you'll notice below my speedometer here, I have a 0, 0.00 acres. If I push right shift O, I'm able to toggle between the hours on the implement, which is the default display, and that worked acres number. Right now that number shows zero. If I turn our sprayer on and start driving here, you'll notice that that acre count starts to go up. I've got point three acres worked already here as we're spraying and so it keeps track of how many acres this particular implement has worked which can be really useful and fun when you're doing things like spraying or harvesting or planting and you want to know how many acres you covered in that particular session or how big that particular field was while you were working on it um, all kinds of applications it's a really handy little feature and you can clear it with a keyboard command as well so in my case it's right control o and we've cleared that back down to zero acres last but certainly not least we also have a meter here below our fill level capacity on our harvester that is showing us how many bushels per acre we're currently bringing in and that is the average since the last time that we've reset that particular metric and so as we pair this up with precision farming it's going to be very interesting to see that as we get into worse soil types and our yield starts going down you can see that our average bushels per acre is also dropping now it's going to continue to keep dropping here as long as we're in the bad area of the soil as i come up here and start harvesting again in our higher quality corn, you'll see that that bushel per acre number does start to come back up. And so this works in combination with our acres worked so far number, as well as how many bushels we've actually brought in over that period of time. I really like this feature. It gives me kind of a easy number to look at and understand how well our crops are doing in a given area. You can see here, we're back into some poorer quality corn, some good quality corn. And so that number's fluctuating up and down a little bit and gives me that more realistic vibe of looking at the yield monitor in the combine while you're going down the field getting kind of a gauge for how well your corn's doing. Hopefully you've found this mod review slash tutorial helpful. 
I'll have links to all four of the community extension related mods in the description of this video, as well as a link to Fundar's Discord server. If you found this video helpful, check out these links to see some of my other tutorials. That's all for today. Kederk out.